Hey everyone, Sliss here, and with the end of Season 1, I just want to talk about uh, my feelings and uh, a general recap on the season and how well I did. Um, I just want to talk about a couple of cards that I felt were overpowered or should be nerfed coming into Season 2. Uh, there's just a few of them, mainly Defender of Argus, because every deck pretty much runs that. Uh, it's really good, like the value on the card itself is amazing. You get two taunt creatures, both get plus one, plus one, and the card itself is a 3-3. Three, three. Right? So it's basically a 5-5, five, five, which gives two taunts, which is ridiculous for the cost of mana. Uh, Blood Imp is also another huge issue because that's a 1-1, one, one. you can't target it, and it gives all of your other creatures one health. And the way the game is made, I feel that at a certain turn, if they play something, there's a spell that costs that much to deal with it, right? Like, if you play a 3-3 three, three on turn 3, there's many cards on turn 3 and turn 4 that can deal with that. Like, Swipe or Wrath deals with that. There's just a ton of cards that allow you to deal with that really well, just for the mana cost, right? But with Blood Imp, it stops that. Like, it, it makes it so you're a turn behind to kill all those creatures unless you happen to coin or innervate or you have some way to deal with them like through creatures or board control like you can't just deal with it from your hand um, so for an example if you have blood imp out right and on turn four you play dark iron dwarf right and you buff your blood imp just for whatever and I'm playing druid I can't swipe that on turn four on turn five I can starfall it right that but that doesn't really do anything I can't wrath it uh, I can Wrath Swipe, but that's turn 6. I'd have to have a creature on board to deal with that. So it's like, eh, it's kind of annoying because Blood Imp is really... It just makes it really hard to play the game. Your AoE spells don't kill anything. Like, Swipe will never kill anything. Because the one damage will just take out the Blood Imp's bonus. And then you're left with a ton of small creatures to kill. Which is why Agar Warlock is really good. Um, another card that I personally feel is a little bit... I don't want to say overpowered, but I feel like it stops a variety of uh, cards being used, which is Novice Engineer. A lot of people run this card in almost every single deck except for Aggro Warlock because the value on it is just so good. Like It's two mana, you're guaranteed to get a card from it, and it's a 1-2, which stops all 1-1s. It stops all um, actives like the... Druid active, which allows you to have one attack, rogue weapon, uh, fire blast from the mage, all the people that have one damage on their active, it stops them from killing it, and it's there on turn two anyways. So, it's really annoying, because every deck basically runs Novice Engineer, and there's ways to play around that, like you can throw in Amani Berserkers in your deck, or Raging Wargans, and use the Novice Engineer to enrage them, but if you do that, then you're kind of throwing yourself off for people that don't play that or for people that play like better cards because those cards really aren't that valuable unless you can enrage them so the problem there is that novice engineer is pretty much in every single deck and to me that's the definition of like a card needs to be fixed is if every single deck is using it and there's no reason to change it because there's no substitute like there's nothing you can do to gain cards from a two drop, like there's Blood Mage Thalnos, but that has to die. Loot Hoarder, that has to die. If you need a card right now, Novice Engineer is like the best pick. There's there's nothing else you can do. So I think if they change that a little bit, it'd be better. Um, but it's okay. I don't think that's like priority. I think Defender of Argus and Blood Imp are actually the priority cards that they need to be focusing on right now. So those are my feelings on some card changes I'd like. Um, I ended up at rank 9, which I'm actually pretty happy about because the last day that I streamed, I only streamed for 2 hours of Hearthstone before the servers went down, but I grinded from like 1 star rank 10 all the way to 4 star rank 9. So I was almost rank 8, but the server cut out on me, so it's okay. I got rank 9. I'm actually really happy with that. I know a lot of people are probably higher than that or they're lower than that, which doesn't really matter what your rank is. It's all about how you play the game and how you improve over time. Um, rank 9, I think, is pretty decent. Um, I feel like after you get to rank 10, it's pretty much the same grind all the way to rank like three or like 5. It's like 25 to 15 is like the same thing. 15 to 10 is the same thing. 
and then from 10 to 5 is the same thing, 5 to 2, and then 2 to legendary. It's basically the same bracket of skill that everyone's in. So I'm happy with being like the third tier bracket, right below legendary player, or right below the rank 5 to rank 2 players. I'm pretty happy with that, um, especially because I play Hunter, which is very... I feel the class is very, like, bad. A lot of people say it's really bad, too. And, like, the only deck that I've seen actually make it to Legendary is the Turn 7 deck, which I actually have. Uh, it's really aggro. It's basically aggro Warlock, sort of. It's, like, its own version. But instead of drawing cards, you tap. Or you use your hero power, which does 2 damage to the enemy hero. So it's sort of like, you, instead of cards, you're just doing 2 damage. So it allows you to kill them really early if you do that every turn and then play one or two one drops. So Hunter's really on the low tier, in my opinion, but it's okay. You know, I still rock with it. So rank nine's good. Uh, hopefully next season I can get close to Challenger. My goal is rank one or two. Uh, if I can get, I said Challenger. <laughs> I keep thinking League of Legends. Uh, hopefully I can get Legendary. That's my goal. One or two, I'll be satisfied. Uh, anything lower than that, as long as it's above rank 9, that's progress, which is all you really want. That's how ranking systems are. Like, It doesn't really show how good you are. It shows how you progressed over time, right? Like in League of Legends, everyone got upset Like if they're silver. It's like, silver's terrible. I don't want to be silver. But like, if you're bronze last season and you're silver one this season, that's really good. You progressed really well. Like You're getting better. And if you keep getting better, you'll be diamond eventually, right? That's the logic behind it. And uh, I just want to segue into like one last, I hate awkward segues, but just one last topic is uh, how to climb in the game. Uh, there's not really many guides and things on how to get better and how to climb and how to improve your rating. There's just people saying like, here's a deck, it's really good, play it. And sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. But what you want to do is either watch streamers and see what they do and why they did it because a lot of streamers will talk out their moves and what they're thinking and why they didn't choose another option and sort of play along with them right whenever I watch streams I'll say okay well if this were me I would play the Yeti and whatever else at this turn right and I'd kill that and then I'd trade that out and this is where I'd be at at the end of the turn and then you watch the streamer and they don't play the Yeti they just clear the board and then drop a 1-1 one, one. and you're like hmm why do they do that and they'll either explain it or later in the game you'll see why like oh because he has the 1-1 one, one instead of the 4-5 blah 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 and it, you just have to learn that way and figure things out on your own or like with the help of streamers watch them do it um, another quick way to climb is to use aggro decks I noticed because a lot of decks aren't made to counter aggro at this time, like, they're either running aggro, which gives you an even chance to beat them, and if your aggro deck's better, it's even better than 50-50, and if you just play a ton of games, you'll eventually climb. So, I'd run aggro for the first couple of ranks, and then around rank 10 is where people start playing decks that counter aggro, and they're more control-based, so you might want to change up your deck around that area, but I feel like just aggro rush for the early ranks are, uh, are your best bet to climbing early. So uh, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it, and uh, I hope you guys subscribe and check out all my other content. Thanks!